Hello and welcome to Investigating the Antibiotic Properties of Gandoderma Lucidum Extract. My name is Ashley McIntosh and this research was also done alongside Dr. Mies. A quick introduction. Mushrooms are understudied and there is a vast amount of knowledge that is actually still unknown about them. They have played a key role in the antibiotics today. Actually, the first antibiotic ever discovered was penicillin, and this came from the mushroom Penicillium ascomycetes fungi. This is a very microscopic bacteria that is found all around us. It is extremely common because of its spores are airborne. And the crisis that we are dealing with today is bacteria are mutating at a faster rate due to the overuse of antibiotics in the medical and agricultural field. And these bacteria are building up an antibiotic resistance due to people not completing their medications completely. And agricultural fields are putting antibiotics in the feeds that they feed their animals, which is also leading to antibiotic resistance. And what antibiotic resistance is, is a bacteria building up a resistance to an antibiotic and it's not killed by the antibiotics directly anymore. And how this occurs is you have a lot of bacteria and when you overuse an antibiotic on this bacteria, it mutates and develops this resistance. So the next time you go to use the same antibiotic on the bacteria, what happens is, is it no longer kills the bacteria and then is able to grow and actually transfer its antibiotic resistance to others. And that's why it's so important to research and find new antibiotics because these bacteria, bacteria mutating at a fast rate that we cannot keep up with antibiotics today. So these bacterial diseases will become prevalent once again in contributing to the deaths and illnesses of many. So today we will be investigating the mushroom Gandoderma lucidum, which is seen here on the right labeled A. And we're going to investigate its relatives as well, which is seen in B and C. And this is Gandoderma lucidum in A. This is Gamodermata sessile in B, and then this is another Gandoderma species in C. And reishi is pretty interesting. It grows in locations of Asia in hot and humid locations. It's parasitic and saprophytic. And a quick description of it is has a dark brown cap, as you can see, with a white ring around the outside. It is kidney shaped, and it has a polypore surface on the bottom, which means it has a bunch of holes. And this is used in order to identify the reishi whenever you are trying to find it in the woods. It is used in Eastern medicine and it's been used in Eastern medicine for many years. And it's known for its anti-cancer and antibiotic effects. And today we'll be investigating the antibiotic effects of this mushroom. And what we'll be doing is looking at the antibiotic properties of reishi and its relatives and seeing if it can combat against E. coli, which is a gram-negative bacteria in Staphylococcus aureus, which is a gram-positive bacteria. My hypothesis is it will be able to be effective against gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. And how this was done is first I had to extract um, nutrients and the antibiotic properties from these mushrooms. So I extracted nutrients from the reishi relatives and this was done by there was four beakers total and then I crushed them up and I had two of them containing 50 milliliters of the crushed Gandoderma sessile and the other two containing 50 milliliters of crushed Gandoderma species and then half of them were soaked in 20% ethanol and then the other were soaked in a distilled water. And so there were four extractions total for the reishi relatives and there was no need to actually extract um, Gandoderma lucinum, which is reishi because it was a store-bought extract 
and it was extracted in 20% alcohol. Next, aseptic techniques were used alongside serial dilutions, and all aseptic technique does is to limit the cross-contamination of bacteria between samples, and this is done by wiping down the surfaces, make sure you always cap your tubes when you're done, flaming your tweezers in between putting them from one tube to another, and then this just limits the cross-contamination of bacteria because there are bacteria and fungi all throughout the air and on surfaces. Next, serial dilutions were performed, and this was done to obtain different concentrations of reishi extract. Four times one to the 10 serial dilutions were done, and this is just, um, you have, I had five tubes total for each dil for each extract. And so I had one tube filled with 10 milliliters of full concentrate and then the others filled with nine milliliters of distilled solution or distilled water. And I, all I did was I transferred one milliliter from the full concentrate to tube one. And then I mixed that. And then from tube one, I transferred another mil to tube three. And this was just done in successive order in order to dilute the full concentrate. Then after all my serial dilutions were performed, which were five total, four for the reishi relatives and one for the store-bought reishi, I placed one fourth diameter paper discs and they were soaked in each solution overnight and then refrigerated in order to prevent microbial growth. Then next a plating technique was used and you can see here on the left how the plates were set up. Um, there was, each dilution was tested on a staphylococcus plate and an E. coli plate, leaving 10 plates total, two plates for each dilution, and one disc from each dilution was placed on the plate. So I had a control disc, which was distilled water, and then I had a full concentrate, a 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3, and then a 10 to the minus 4 dilution. And once this was done, these plates were then labeled and placed in incubation for 24 hours at 30 degrees, at 37 degrees Celsius. And then once I was able to incubate them, we had the results. So these are the results for the store-bought reishi. And the store-bought reishi was able to obtain some results for the full concentrate. So the full concentrate on E. coli, it produced a zone of inhibition of 0.3 centimeters. And for the staphylococcus, which is seen here, it produced a 0.1 centimeter zone of inhibition. And the zone of inhibition, all that is, is an area around the disc that inhibited bacterial growth, and that's the antibiotic doing its job. The 10 to the minus one produced a small zone of inhibition, but the results were very inconsistent, so it wasn't included in my overall results. And three trials were done for the store-bought reishi. One trial was done for the reishi relatives, and surprisingly, all reishi relatives did not produce any zone of inhibition for all the dilutions. And as you can see, the results of the full concentrate of the overall results are seen here. And only the store-bought reishi extracts produced any results. And as you can see, for the full concentrated B. coli, it produced the largest zone of inhibition and the staph produced the smallest. So in conclusion, the store-bought reishi was able to produce a zone of inhibition on staph and E. coli. And the E. coli, even though had, it had the stronger zone of inhibition and the staph had the smallest, it was still able to be classified as a broad spectrum antibiotic. And surprisingly, the Rishi relatives produced no zone of inhibitions. And this could have actually been, um, there could have been some errors in the extraction process, process from the Rishi relatives. And since I only ran one trial, was not able to test further. But if I was to do, run another test 
on the Rishi relatives, I would lower the extraction temperature because at 80 degrees Celsius, it could have been too hot and actually denature the proteins in the Rishi relative, which means it would have not been an effective antibiotic. And if I were to continue researching, I would like to investigate the substances in the Rishi relatives to compare to the actual Rishi extract of Gandoderma lucidum. And this would be done doing gas chromatography mass spec and high performance liquid chromatography. And what this does is compare the substances between the two because I would like to see if it wasn't the extraction temperature that was at fault for not having a zone of inhibition, I would like to see what properties they differ in that could have caused the antibiotic to be so strong in the Rishi than the Rishi relatives. And I would like to thank you for listening. And I would like to also thank Dr. Meese in helping with all my research. And I would like to thank CAL for letting me use their facilities. Thank you.